edge of innovation within Source, the podcast that takes you on a thrilling ride through the world of digital transformation. Before you jump into part two of our chat with Insource's Brian Premock and Ted Floor, be sure to check out part one. And if you've already listened to that, let's jump right in where we left off. In part one, we covered some great stuff about the Operations Control 2023 R2 release. And I've brought Brian and Ted back to talk about even more. So thanks, guys, for joining me again. Um, let's just jump right in. What else is available in this release? Well, thanks for having us back, Katie. We weren't sure we were going to make it past uh, the pilot, so it's great to be here. Um, yeah, what, last time we talked about operations control, and in you know, I guess typical of Eva fashion, it's got two names, right? It's got uh, what they call the SCADA portfolio, and then it's got this new licensing, mo- unlimited licensing model, where you pay by you you get you get access to a ton of product, uh, and you pay by the number of of users, right? So maybe we should start with like uh, wh- what's in ops control uh, from a product standpoint. So last time, you know, I think I, I mentioned InTouch. InTouch has been the oldest, arguably the oldest piece of the portfolio dating back to, uh, you better, I, I lived through it. So Windows 3.1, 1990, you know, 900, 800, 900,000 users out there or licenses that were are put out there. Um, you know, that was followed with System Platform. Um, that was released like in t- 2003. That's a, distribu- a distributed SCADA system. So you can you can basically use that SCADA, distribute it widely, and still have one single namespace. So that, that that's a that's a difference maker. Um, and that's in the portfolio. That, too, is at 2023 R2 right now. Um, then we have uh, a product called, well, it was known as Indisoft. It was acquired, uh, I think, in 2014. And it's been part of the portfolio. It's called Edge, and that's what we call it right now. They grew up selling the product to OEMs, industrial PC manufacturers, which which Schneider Electric was one of them. Um, That last year was um, delayed slightly, but now is out at 2023 R2. So, um, and and they've got a great legacy support for that. So if you've got older uh, Indusoft, native Indusoft, or Indusoft that was sold on top of you know, Vantech Studio or Beckhoff or Schneider Electric or a bunch of other OEMs, you can upgrade that to Edge. Um, then we have Plant SCADA. Uh, that's the current name for what was called SciTech. So SciTech was acquired by Schneider Electric in 2007. A great product. I mean, uh, very robust, um, well regarded. Um, it started in Australia. Um, did a lot of big mining operations in Australia and South Africa. Um, so that's in the portfolio too. And that's called Plant SCADA. That's now at 2023 R2 as well. And then of course the uh, the historian, what we call the Aviva historian, that dates, that was called Industrial SQL Server, dates back to like 1997. So that's been out there, I think now 27 years. It's included with all these SCADA offers. And then we have um, a reporting tool that's native with the historian. It's called Reports for Operations. It used to be the old Ocean Data Systems product. Uh, can't remember the name of that uh, that 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 product, but that's that's bundled. That's part of the operations control portfolio. Uh, all of our communication drivers used to be called I/O servers are in there. And then we have some tools for monitoring system health. So that's the 2023 operations control portfolio. Awesome. That's a lot in that portfolio to talk about. (laughs) (laughs) So with that, I mean, what, what are we talking about? I mean, I'm obviously I'm not a user of the system, but I talk about it a lot. What am I looking at when I'm talking about the, the new advances that they've made in these different pieces, these different components? Brian, you mentioned at the beginning of this podcast, or maybe it was a previous podcast about Microsoft 365 and the components. When you get a subscription, you're not just signing up for Word or Excel. You're, you're getting Word, Excel. You're getting PowerPoint. You're getting OneNote. You're getting Outlook. You know, you can connect to Exchange or you have Teams that we're using here today. There's a lot of different components to that. So just like the or Aviva portfolio, we have a lot of components. We talk about pure SCADA. Right, and this is not your father's SCADA system anymore. We need to tie into and communicate with a lot of other systems, a lot of other people out there on the plant floor. So the HMI connectivity that you're there, 
Uh, you talked about the historian reporting is included in it. Aviva reports is included in this package. Folks have heard about Insight, our cloud solution, where we can pump data up to the cloud and apply some models and some analytics to that. That's part of this bundle. So literally, we can check a box in our historian, pump that data up to the cloud, make it available to the masses so other people and other people within the organization can see this data. Um, we have another tool in there for knowledge and skills management called teamwork, the ability to kind of track who's trained on what piece of equipment very easily. And then there's also a collaboration piece. Some people call it Facebook for the factory, how I can communicate with the workers out there on the plant floor and share documents and share best practices that you might have and create videos of how to calibrate a piece of equipment before you uh, start it up. So there's a lot of interaction between a lot of different actors that we have out there in our in the uh, the industry beyond just the SCADA control system. And of course, we need communication drivers. And of course, we need the development toolkits to be able to develop these applications. And then these systems need to be healthy. We need to make sure these systems stay up and running so we have some health tools in there that go out and monitor the status of all the servers and all the computers and give you some alerts when there's something going wrong. You know, a disk is full or you're running low on RAM, it'll get some alerts so you can make sure you have uptime there. So it's a great bundle of solutions all under the umbrella of ops control and you're paying by users. You're not buying those individual pieces of equipment or those individual pieces of software. You're buying this bundle and you're paying by users and use them as much as you want. So it's it's a great uh, it's a great bundle of tools that we have available. And it's a lot easier model to get these different tools nowadays. Yeah, and the analogy you make um, is I, I think pretty timely. You know, I mean, I mean, like even at Insource, I mean, we pay by the user and we get everything that we need. We don't, you know, every single day, the fluidity between getting a, a, an email, opening it up, and opening up an Excel document. Now, technically, that requires an Excel license, and then Usually there's some kind of, you know, memo that goes with that. That's a mem that's a word document. And then we got to assemble that into a PowerPoint, you know, and then oftentimes we're using OneDrive in the back end for facilitation and we're using Teams. Well, in the old days, those were all individual licenses. Um, but now because of the way we work, you know, we get them all by paying, you know, for one user at a time. And that's the model that we're talking about here. And and what's really cool is that you know you you pay by the number of users. You can unload as much in touch as you want if that's what you have in the plant. You can download and uh, and use as many communication drivers. And then you have access. Like if you wanted to, if you got into a situation where you wanted to s segregate the process historian from 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 a tier two historian, well, that's where Insight comes in. That that's being used all over the place. You just push out the data you want to Insight, and then. Users that are more business-like users can get access to the data without going down into the plant network. All those problems are really elegantly solved with this operations Aviva operations control model where you pay for it by, by the number of users. That sounds yeah. like it's a lot different than kind of the way we used to do it. Um, you know, when you would buy, you know, a license per person and all that good stuff. And I, I think, you know, Aviva is not the only one evolving like that, like you, like you guys said. So, um, I mean, from that point, uh, what else do we need to know about this offering um, in order for for us to find the most success with using it? What are, what are the things that we we are most excited about? I guess is my my question here. Yeah, there's some there's some new things with the. 2023 R2 release I can talk about, Katie, is specifically system platform. We've talked about InTouch, some of the new things there within system platform. One of the big things that's out is uh, something called OMI Web. You know, a lot of folks don't know what OMI is. It's kind of our next generation HMI. It's tied very tightly in the system platform. It's, it's a way to develop systems and graphics, you know, kind of an object-oriented approach. You're not designing specific screens, you're linking assets and linking graphics to assets. So it's a great tool that OMI has been out there for a while, but now there's OMI web. So if I want to make it available to other folks within my organization, they don't necessarily have to have a full-blown version of OMI. They can see it in a web browser. People that are remote, I can see this information on my tablet or my smartphone to give you that data at your fingertips, no matter where you are in your plant or for, you know, we have a lot of customers who have remote assets, remote stations. They can see this data remotely also with a very light interface. So real excited about the OMI web release here. 
you know, everybody's concerned about cybersecurity these days and security releases and things like that. So Aviva is constantly putting a lot of R&D effort into making their systems secure. Um, everything we have now, we can uh, have encrypted communication between all our different servers and devices out there we have encryption but this 2023 r2 release you know we're removing getting away from decom decom has been a security issue for a while and just we're, we're um, removing that dependency from decom so making it much more cyber friendly than than having all that uh older technology and decom in there so that's one of the things that's going to be phased out in this new release um beyond the encryption and things that we talked about. A couple other things that, that's new here is buffered attributes. So if we're trying to collect a bunch of data and pump that data to my historian, you want to collect that data very quickly. Sometimes that data is coming in quicker than we're scanning those objects inside a system platform. So we have this thing called buffered attributes and we can make them those, uh, the configuration of those global now where we said, okay, we want to buffer that data in between our scans of system platforms so that data would automatically get pushed to my historian. So we're not going to lose any data in between the scans of, of application server. We can capture data very quickly and then maybe, maybe feed that to some analytics. So that data collection is very important. There's a new component where within OMI, we can add content dynamically. We want to add a piece of equipment on a screen dynamically. We can do that now within OMI that we couldn't do before. Um, some of the other things with Historian, um, something called ad hoc expressions. We could have put an expression and trend that. We want to you know, do a little bit of math on two or three different variables and trend what that might look like is something we couldn't do before. So that's kind of new and exciting there. Historian Client Web has been out in the last few releases, but there's some new enhancements there. We can do more alarm displays, filtering alarms within uh, the Historian Web. You know, pumping all that alarm information to Historian is something we could do for a while. Having the alarms and your uh, process data at one location and kind of see and overlay alarm information on process data is very powerful. And then there's some tighter integration between the uh, web interface for the historian client and Excel. So we can exchange data with Excel very easily from uh, from the historian web client. So, you know, a lot of great new things coming out with the 2023 R2 release. You know, one of the things we're constantly expanding on is there's a lot of open communications going on out there in the industry. OPC UA, we've embraced that very tightly. We have some integration to that with InTouch we talked about. System platform can link to OPC UA. MQTT is another protocol that's very uh, gaining a lot of speed out there in the industry, so we can embrace those applications. Web services. We have a web services driver, so if we're trying to do some REST communications to some third-party system, as opposed to writing a bunch of code to make those calls, we can just you know, connect to our REST communication driver and bring that data into attributes or send data to a web services through system platform very easily. So really nice uh, new, new interfaces and communication mechanism to pull that data together. So what this gives us is, you know, we talked about Insight and pushing data up to Insight and the Viva Data Hub. We have the ability to push data to the Viva Data Hub. We're kind of coming up with this hybrid cloud model where we want to keep SCADA on the plant floor, right? We don't want to put SCADA in the cloud. We don't want to, when we hit a start button to start a motor or hit a stop button, uh, more importantly, it stops. We're not going through the internet. So we want those SCADA components to be on-prem, on the cloud, to give you that real-time performance. But from data analytics and things like that and databases, sometimes it makes sense to put them in the cloud and use the capabilities of cloud and uh, the ability to do AI modeling and things like that and do some alerts with, with some of our AI tools by using the horsepower of cloud. So we're coming up with a hybrid cloud environment that pure SCADA environment is local, but from an analytics data perspective, we can push all that up to the cloud and take the advantages some of some of those cloud opportunities we have there. So real exciting stuff going on out there in the world with cloud and our new offerings. Yeah. Um, so guys, I think um, we've we've hit our time, but I want to thank you so much for doing this with me. Um, you're my my first guest on our new podcast, and so I'm excited to have had you. Um, and we look forward to hearing more as, uh, you know, Adviva makes these advances going forward. You know, with that, 
our clients can always contact us. You know, there's there's many ways to get a hold of us, our website, phone number, email, all that great stuff. But they can even just email you guys and ask questions if they've got them, right? Like we can Absolutely. we can always connect with them. Um and so we'll we'll make sure that information is um along with our episode here. But um thanks and I look forward to doing future episodes with you when there's many more exciting things to talk about. Thanks, Katie. Enjoy it. Right. Take care. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe to our channels for up-to-the-minute updates and new episode releases. As always, we'd love to hear from you too. Send in your ideas and questions so we can use them in future episodes. And until next time, stay on the edge of innovation.